everybody. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Carrie Justick. Today, I'll be sitting across from the one and only Paris Hilton, who just recently dropped a new single called My Best Friend's Ass, which unsurprisingly features a music video cameo by her BFF, Kim Kardashian. Let's take a look. Everybody, Paris Hilton. Yes, thank you. Girl, this song is a bop. I'm obsessed with it. I really like didn't know what to expect. The beat is amazing. The lyrics, obviously, I mean, how could you not sing along when you're singing about your best friend's ass? Um, where did you get this idea? Where did this all come from? Well, I'm working with Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, and they're incredibly talented DJs, producers, and we all came up with this song together and just thought, just kind of having fun with the social media and the whole club scene and just the whole title, it's just, the lyrics are hysterical. The song is so catchy, and I'm so proud. It's just with the response we're getting from the song. It's it's a lot of fun. I can't wait for everyone to see the actual music video. And how ironic that your best friend is Kim Kardashian. She was the perfect person to have in the video. Like It would be a crime to not have the most infamous ass in the world <laughs> in a music video called Best Friend's Ass. I know. I'm, I'm sure you'd be hearing it from people if she were nowhere to be found. They'd be like, um, you had one chance to just throw Kim Kardashian in there. Yeah, she loved the song and loved the whole concept of the video. And we had so much fun on set together. She looks stunning. Yeah, I mean, you guys both look amazing in your matching chainmail yeah. dresses. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about filming? Like how long it took, how long you guys were like bumping in that club? It was a two day shoot and it was just so much fun. We had a lot of great cameos come in. Nikita Dragon, who I love, was amazing in the video. She's so beautiful. And just all of my friends came to support and to dance and look hot and shake their asses. <laughs> um, obviously, I love that you gave Nikita a shout out and included her in this. I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, and I feel like it makes a lot of sense for you because she's a huge influencer and huge on social media and YouTube. And you're kind of like the leader of that. So what's it like to be able to include her in this? I thought she was just perfect for it. I love all of her photos. I think she's just so sexy and confident. And she, just like Kim, has a beautiful ass. <laughs> and she was just so cool and so much fun and so down to earth. And just, we had the best time. And the video just looks so iconic. And when you talk about being inspired by social media for this, can you explain a little bit more about that? Because even like the chitter chatter in there like all the the stuff that the girls are saying it's like very I can see it pouring over like snapchat and instagram and whatever so where did you really like pull from for for this song and the lyrics um just about nightlife in general just the things that people say when we're out or on all the girls in the bathroom and we're gossiping and just talking about f boys I don't even know if we're allowed to say the word <laughs> um, I'm assuming or not if my mom is watching I don't want to say it um, so just kind of having fun with that and just making kind of like a summer anthem, something just for people just to like have fun, laugh, have a good time, dance. And now we just started the hashtag BFA challenge, which is the best friends ass challenge. So I'm going to be posting that. And um, a lot of people have been sending me their videos. So if anyone wants to send me one, just hashtag it with that. And I can't wait to see you rock out to my song. That's like the most fun part about releasing music now is I feel like social media you have an opportunity to like create these challenges around your song and it's so fun to see the way that it's interpreted which I'm sure for you is incredible plus you have such a special relationship with your fans so I'm sure you already know like the people that will be at the top of that hashtag putting in their videos oh definitely for sure <laughs> um and like you already said best friends ass and talking about f boys and whatever and your mom might be watching how did you show this song to your family and what did they think I was actually on my way to Kim's baby shower and I put it on the car in the car for my mom and I was a little bit nervous I'm like there's some swear words but mom it's just like it's funny you know you get it and then she was listening she's like oh my I love this this is amazing and then the DJs like they called me Mike and um Dimitri and my mom got on the phone she's like this song is a hit I love it. I love the whole thing. And she started singing it. And then my dad texted me and was like, I love your new best friend, A song. 
<laughs> it's going to be a huge summer hit. And I was like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> I was kind of nervous to play it for him. Um, but they both love it, so... He's awesome. like, if you can give me the clean version, I'll put it on my iPod. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on a playlist somewhere. Um, is it easy to, like, do they come to your shows? Do they like listening to a lot of the music that you make and you play while you're DJing? Well, I travel all around the world. It's not like my parents are going to be coming to a phone party in Ibiza. They um, totally should, though. That needs to happen. <laughs> but they've come to my shows, like when I play in Vegas or L.A. or New York or somewhere close. They're always there and supporting. And my mom loves music and loves to dance, so she always has a great time. And I know that you've said that this is something that you wanted to use to empower women, which I think is really awesome. And I think at first, when you hear best friends ass and you're thinking about Kim Kardashian, like running around in her little dress, like people might be like, how is this empowering? So I wanted a little bit of your perspective of how you kind of like got that in there, what kind of vibe it gives you in terms of, you know, making women feel stronger and more beautiful. Um, well, when you listen to the lyrics, it's, it's, it is a women empowerment song. It's about just being a girl boss, owning the night, not letting the F boys get to you. And it's more fun just to like stare at your best friend's ass and dance than be annoyed by some random dude. Yeah, I'm such like a GNO girl, like Girls Night Out. Yes. And so this is like totally, this will be the pregame song of the summer, like you said. Um, and obviously you're in the clubs all the time. So in terms of the music video, like was there any one vibe or venue that you were going for? Like, was it like, oh, one time in Ibiza, I went to this one spot and I kind of want to recreate that? Or was it like Paris's own world coming to life? It was a fantasy world. The whole concept of the video is basically these two other girls walk in to this club and they put on kind of these Insta goggles and they immediately are brought into this fantasy world and the two girls turn into me and Nikita. And then we kind of flash back and forth between the parties, like what's actually happening in reality at the real party with everyone wearing these like th kind of like virtual reality glasses. Mm -hmm. And then when they are seeing what it really is like in the fantasy world. So it's kind of just showing social media in that way. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting concept. I would love to just put on a pair of glasses with my best friend and turn into you and Nikita. <laughs> so if you can actually make that happen, definitely let me know. I'll build, I'll build an app that does that. Yeah, and that's, see, that's where like the business woman comes out. She's like, best friend's ass, stream it, watch it, and then I will actually create this virtual world for you. Why not? Um, and so obviously you've already hinted at some projects with Kim, um, and obviously you've worked together before. Any chance that you would have any interest in getting involved in like politics and law like Kim is doing, or you're gonna stay away from that? I'm so busy working on all of my businesses, but I think she is so brilliant and I really applaud her for what she's doing. She's already done incredible work freeing people from prison and really using her voice to make a difference and help people's lives. So I really just commend her on that. I don't know if I could pull it off. Like maybe I'd be like legally blonde, like Reese Witherspoon, my chihuahua and like a cute little pink Chanel suit. But um, no, I'll leave that to Kim. She can be, she can be the hot lawyer. <laughs> Well, what I love about both of you, especially when we're talking about like social media and influencers and stuff like that, people really say that the two of you were pioneers in the world of like being famous for being famous, but the two of you have built these empires. You both have multiple businesses and are really recognized for being entrepreneurs and business women. How do you go from like DJ Paris to businesswoman Paris? Like, is there a different hat you put on where you're like, okay, I'm walking into this meeting like a boss and then I'm gonna go get crazy on the dance floor at the DJ booth? Definitely, during the day, I'm all about business. I dress completely differently. It's more like elegant and chic. And then at night I have my alter ego where I turn into Raver Barbie and I'm wearing like hot pink and sparkles and LED lights and kitty ears and it's a totally different vibe. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a character that I go into in the night. That's so fun. That's really I always fun. love hearing about, like, people talk about their alter egos, and I'm like, who the hell is my alter ego? I need to make you one. I know. <laughs> I know. Can you do that? Like, you need, like, uh, I know, reality, you've been there. You created it. 
everything, but maybe your next show should be like helping people create their alter egos, like a makeover series, but like not to find the true me, to find like the alter I ego me. That. That's a cute idea. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you're into it, so we can we can try to make it happen. Loves it. Um, and so right now you're also filming a new YouTube documentary. Um, you've been followed by cameras for most of your life. I mean, you did The Simple Life. You also recently did American Meme. So it, it's not the first time that we're going to get a look into some of your life. Um, but how is this one in particular going to be different? Uh, this film is basically focusing on my entire life um, from the beginning till now. And just a lot of things I've never talked about before. And, you know, what what has happened in my life to get to me at this point. Mm -hmm. And just things that have never really been discussed. And there's going to be a lot of things that people are very surprised about that I've never shared with anyone before. But I just feel like it's the right time in my life. I feel so grown up. I feel so happy. I feel just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm in a really great place, place in my life right now. And I just want the world to see the real me. That's awesome. I mean, I know you've spoken even in American Meme, you like touched on some darker aspects and, you know, some hardships that you've gone through. And it's obviously not easy to just be in the spotlight 24 seven. Um, but I'm wondering in terms of like how you've evolved and grown, like what is the behind the scenes look like when you're listening to like the tabloids and all these rumors? Like, how do you kind of take a step back and work on yourself to then overcome those things? I honestly don't pay attention to any of that anymore. I think in the beginning, it was something I would really hurt my feelings when I would hear a rumor or someone would be making something up or just inventing some crazy story and it would bother me so much. And over the years, I've just built such a tough skin where I don't let things like that get to me because I feel that life is so short and I don't want to waste another minute. I don't want to waste on negativity, on bad people, on being sad. I just feel like there's so many beautiful things in the world. I have so many amazing fans and my friends and everyone who really love me and know the real me. Mm -hmm. So I only pay attention to those people. Definitely, I love that. I love all of you guys. I also couldn't help but think you are so involved in social media. I mean, you seem to have such like a positive following. You have an incredible relationship with your fans, like I have mentioned already. Um, but in terms of when you were younger and when you were on The Simple Life and you were, I'm sure, like getting scrutinized by tabloids and all of that stuff, if social media were the way that it is today, how do you think it would have impacted you then? I'm actually happy I grew up without social media because it's just, I don't know, like back in the day when we used to go out, it was so much fun. Everybody was just having a good time and dancing and talking. And now everybody's just, you know, glued to their phone, taking photos, snapping. And I love that too, but I don't know. I feel like the human connection is not there as much. Mm -hmm. But um, another thing I would have loved back then is to be able to dispel rumors and lies. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great tool when you want the truth to come out. You could just tell everyone on your own. And back then, we couldn't do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and what would your social media have looked like in like 2003? Like, you know, Lit. you and Nicole Ritchie are like <laughs> at the farm in your cute overalls, like, you know, p doing stuff with the cows. We what had, would the gram look well, we like? Had, we had like a disposable camera, so we would take pictures like with like cows and <laughs> <laughs> as you do, standing in front of Walmart. And um, I don't know, but if I had social media back in the day, it would be just lit. <laughs> so much fun. I need to see all those pictures. I have them. <laughs> I'm like, I need to see them. She's like, I have them. You won't see them. <laughs> no, I'll bring them next time. Yeah, one day. I mean, I can't wait to see what's in this upcoming documentary, but also, like, down the road, there needs to be, like, a full feature film on Paris Hilton, pulling all those pictures out, pulling all the unseen footage out. Like, I think we all, we all need that. It's if you're, coming. If you're game for it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so in terms of your fans, can you tell us some of the, like, craziest encounters you've had? Um, the craziest encounters? Um, there's been a lot of them. Um, one guy, like, proposed to me at the Hard Rock Hotel in Vegas after I finished my DJ set. And you said? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, the things like that happen a lot. People showing up at my house, like sometimes scary people. One guy came with like two giant knives and was trying to break into my house. And that was really scary because I, I don't know if he would have got in what would have happened. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's some scary times, but like I said, I only focus on the positive. <laughs> Do you think people need to know more about those things though? Because I feel like a lot of the time with celebrities who are like really out there on social media, like people know a lot about you and obviously it's still filtered, like you put what you want up there, um, but you hear about celebrities like dealing with stalkers and things and I, I don't know if you think people take it seriously enough or how it should be dealt with. Well, with social media now, everyone knows where you are at every moment. If you're Snapchatting and putting the location, they're obviously going to know where you are. So I think it's important to be careful in, in certain situations because you never know what's going to happen. Do you ever trick people? Like, um, like, you know, like post things a few days later and you're like, oh, I'm at this restaurant. But like, you're not actually at the restaurant. I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to be one of those people that like fakes a vacation, but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> You're so cute. Um, and, <laughs> um, and your 25th fragrance is coming out this summer. That's really nuts. Um, I have approximately like maybe seven perfumes in my collection. And like sometimes I can't even tell them apart. Like it's like you have 25 children. So like how do you keep that all straight? I love it. I've been in the fragrance industry for 15 years now, and to be coming out with my 25th is just a dream come true. Like, as a little girl, I always wanted just to have like one perfume come out, so I had no idea in my wildest dreams it would be at this level. But I'll send you some of my kids, oh, since you yeah. only have seven. We'll add. We'll do you, add some do you have a favorite, or that's like picking a favorite child? I love them all, but my favorite right now is Platinum Rush, because it's my newest baby. Yeah. And then when it comes to creating a new one, like where do you even s start? I, I, I'm always thinking of new ideas, different campaign ideas, names. I always want to make sure that they're cleared so I can start coming up with the, with the campaign, what it's going to look like, the bottle, the scent. It's, it's amazing just to create something and then finally see the finished product. Mm -hmm. I love it. And obviously, like, you're super creative because you have all these things going on, like, from those types of products to music. I can imagine, like, do you have a notepad in your phone or something that's just full of nuts ideas? Or, like, where do you put things down when it's just, like, popping into your head? I'm, a, like, I'm an Aquarius, so okay. I just, like, am very creative. I come up with ideas every second. So I usually just text myself on my other phone, and then I'll do voice notes, I'll scribble like on pieces of paper everywhere. So it's just, it's a lot of things I think of all the time. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and just think of some amazing idea and do it the next day. Yeah, I can picture you like doing a DJ set in Ibiza and like an entire business plan is just like being created. Always. You know, like all those people are like rolling and like nobody's okay down there. Not much is in their head. And this girl is like coming up with the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also like you're the number one female DJ in the world. And you apparently get paid $1 million per DJ gig, which is absolutely absurd um and i have to ask an absurd question what's the richest thing you've ever done um, <laughs> that's a real question i'm like really not playing i don't <laughs> like, know have, like what's like something that's like so silly and over the top that you just like one day you were like fuck it i have the money let's let's go i'm actually not that high maintenance like i'm very like chill about things like that but I don't think, at the other night, they were, like, feeding us, like, these 24-carat gold-covered everything. Like, it was just, like, chicken, and then the sushi was gold-covered, and then the chocolate, and then this. I was like, is it healthy to eat this much gold? <laughs> You're like, I'm fine with wearing it, but it sh should I be ingesting it? Yeah. No, I always wonder about those things because I feel like that's totally a thing, like, the 24-carat gold donuts, and everybody's like, does it taste better? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's just like a, you do it because you can do it. Basically. <laughs> the restaurant just gave it to us, and I was like, this is cool. 
looks great for the Snapchat. I was going to say, <laughs> it makes a good social media post. Um, so we are going to hand it over to some audience members for questions. First one right here. Hi, Paris. Um, Michael okay. David. Nice, nice to, to see, see you again. again. Happy 21st birthday. Thank you Woo! so much. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. But um, congrats on BFA. Um, you and Kim both are just such great figures when it comes to women and, you know, obviously very big inspirations of mine. But now um, back to your fragrances, you've done literally 25 beautiful scents that are all so different. Would you ever consider maybe making a more masculine scent or maybe a male line of fragrances? Because I know that your male fans would love that. Yes, we're actually developing the next men's fragrance right now. So it'll be out very soon. And Paris Hilton for men is like the best. It smells insane, but the new one is even better. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'll send you it for your birthday. Loves it. As if she were only just releasing a song. She's like, I have things going on, don't worry. <laughs> yes. Hi Paris, I love you. Love you. <laughs> so you are a singer, a DJ, a businesswoman. So is there anything you haven't done that you would like to do? Everyone always asks me that question, and I feel like I've done everything. So I think the one thing that I am doing, which I haven't even announced yet, is all of the different projects I'm doing in the tech world. Um, I've always been like a huge tech geek. I'm obsessed with anything to do with technology. And I have created with some really brilliant people a lot of new apps that are coming out this year and really exciting projects. So that's a world that I'm obsessed with, and also the VR space, virtual reality, and that's another thing that I'm creating right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Love awesome. your faux fur jacket. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. Go ahead. Hi, Paris. I love this song. I love you. Thank and you. And I have a question. It's like, um, would you invite your best friend like him and he can have his thing with you? Or you have? can we expect more other forms of collaborations? Yeah, definitely. We have some fun projects coming up. So there'll be some surprises coming out soon. Thank you. Yes. That's so awesome. I have to ask just because he asked business-wise, what's like a bucket li list item for you in life? Because like you said, you've kind of done it all. So I'm like, what? what is like the one thing that you're like, I cannot leave this earth without doing X? It used to be skydiving, but now I've been six times. So <laughs> that's off the and bucket And when you list. do it, you really do it. Okay. <laughs> so I think the only thing that I haven't done yet is go to space. Okay. Well, there it is. And I'm sure with like all the tech, all the DJing, whatever, we will be going to one of your sets in space soon. Club which would Paris, oh. up on Mars. Oh, yes. And we will be listening to Best Friends Ass on repeat while we're up there. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. <laughs>